Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 11 of our quarantine film study series. Uh, we have a, a real privilege today. We're going to be talking Aaron Donald in defensive line play with uh, a, a man that uh, taught me so much about the position and really I hold in the highest esteem when it comes to uh, the nuances of pass rush. A lot of people will, will talk about it, but uh, Coach Waffle is someone that can really get into the weeds and, and help players. And the, the laundry list of those that he has coached up and helped grow. Uh, we were together with the Giants for a period of time, and I'm sure you guys remember some names like Michael Strahan and OCU Manura and Justin Tuck. And uh, it, was a, it was a pretty impressive uh, group <laughs> put together there. There was a couple of rings on some fingers due to making Tom Brady's life a little miserable there. But, Coach, thank, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, you're welcome, Dan. So we're going to – you had picked out going through some of 2018 and 2019, specifically looking at some of the production and, and wanted to just kind of unpack some of the things that Aaron does so well. And so we're, we're going to dive into those starting with 2018, but as always – need to say thank you to a couple groups that made this possible for us. The first being telemetry sports a tool that allows us to help make these cut ups that we can bring to you guys. And secondly, need to say thank you to the NFL for providing game pass while we're counting down here in the number of days they are still providing it free through May 31st. Uh, but it is something that we encourage people to pick up for the duration of the year. That access to film is invaluable. Uh, so thank you very much to them as well. All right, so let's go to the beginning of 2018 and, again, talk through what makes Aaron Donald special here. And so just as we – I'll try to mark up Aaron for everybody before the snaps uh, just so I can show the audience where he's at. Uh, and then we'll run it through, and then I'd love to you know, obviously get your breakdown on the things that he's doing uh, that really makes him special in, this, in these situations. Okay, if you could freeze it uh, right from the start, okay. <clears throat> now, the things that, that happens is that uh, if you read the book Art of War, and you know thy enemy, you know thyself, you shall not fear the result of a thousand battles. Uh, his uh, study starts, obviously, with the offensive lineman. So the secrets, when you're studying an offensive lineman, if you study the f leg or the foot closest to the football, that's the set foot. Okay, that's a set foot. Now, it's he's either a short setter, a deep setter, or an over setter. End of story. Now you study the foot away from the ball, the farthest away from the ball. That, that shows his body, okay, what his body does. He's either a leaner, that hip turns, it'll turn and open the door to the quarterback, or he has no anchor and he comes back easily. Those are the only three things, okay, that, that you study. Now you have the hands. No brainer if both hands come at you, he's a puncher. No brainer if both hands come outside the frame of your body, it's, he's a wrapper. Then you have the inside hand, okay, and you have uh, the gap hand which is closest to you i call it the gap hand okay and and uh or no hand so there's five things a puncher with two a wrapper with two inside hand gap hand no hands end of story so it, all during the week they would study and then on thursdays we would put the rush plan together and uh aaron and his backup uh, would I'd say you're up and they would tell me, okay, this guy is a uh, oversetter. Okay. He's uh, uh, low hands. All right. And uh, he has no anchor. And that's how they defined it. You could only do the three things. Then uh, what we would do, we would match up to the rush plan. So uh, on this side right here, now, Aaron, when he's out a little bit wider in his alignment, he's taking advantage of 79 because he's an oversetter. So he's, he's, he's setting up. He knows, he knows he's going to overset uh, when Aaron's wider like that, so he takes the inside move. Um, the next thing is, is we study the protections, okay? We study the protections. Uh, there's no backs right here, so it's empty, okay? So uh, there's three receivers on one side. There's two receivers on the other side, and that center is going to go to one of those sides. And, and it's either the three-man side or the two-man side. 
okay? For him not to come to Aaron Donald, that's insane, okay? It doesn't matter. But, um, you know, that's part of the study too. So the, uh, we know the protections, okay? So in no backs, uh, it's all based on numbers. I'm not going to get into it. It's, it's very simple, but it's not worth getting into. Okay, so go ahead and run the film, Dan. You ready? There you go. Okay. All right. So as he does this, okay, as he comes with the inside move, it's it's just not the inside move. It's just, it's just, it's more. Okay. He's not, he's got the inside move. He knows he has it. You can see he's this guy's an oversetter. He's got low hands. He still can, he can get him. He doesn't have a chance to get Aaron. All right, Aaron, Aaron comes through, but he just doesn't rush and just think, oh, I, I beat this guy. He goes, see how he gets his hands to the back of the center? He's making sure that that center honors him, okay? Now, you can see the other defensive tackle is coming to the inside, and he attracts the eyes of the center, and, and um, you know, the center's in limbo. But now, once he's to that point, once he's to the back, and once you get to the back of the blocker, and end of story in pass rush, that's the main objective, to get to the back of the blocker. If they say, oh, get by the hip and all that, that's not good enough, okay? It's not good enough. All right, get to the back of the blocker, and then you're going to get home free. So just to bring that back, you talked about being an oversetter here and the width of this alignment. So I just want to, obviously we're doing a little bit of teacher for the people at home, but that's all designed to keep this or get this A-gap even wider, correct? That's correct. So as he, the 79 comes to set out for him, yep. that's opening up that window. Yep. Now, if you notice the track, Aaron does two different things to set it up. He uh, he lines wide, but then watch his initial track in his rush. It's a speed rush up the field. So he's selling the speed rush. And 79 is just like panicking, okay, because I got to I gotta deal with Aaron on my outside. Now, he's 79 studied the film, and he knows that Aaron's – Got a great move on that side, and we'll talk about that later. It's kind of unstoppable, all right? So he's he's ready for that, and so he gets the inside move, and it's a beautiful thing. Man, that's now, impressive. Yeah, the next thing is when you go into a quarterback, okay, you're trying to get the ball. See how he's – no matter what no matter what, what you do, you're trying to get the ball out. You're going get, to get your hand near that ball no matter what. But this next thing is when you tackle the quarterback, okay, and he's doing it, okay, you roll you roll your body, you turn your body, you roll like you're wrestling an alligator. We practice it all the time. Like you're rolling, you want to turn. Now watch how he keeps rolling, all right? So the quarterback, even if he did try to throw it, okay, he's he's rolling like that, and it, it takes his body out of uh, out of a position to be able to throw the football, which is just, it's also winning too, okay? If even he tries to throw it away, it's not going to be – uh, completed down the field. So that's called a gator tackle, and that's how you finish. And the other thing that I taught uh, was to tackle right through the midsection, okay? Aaron likes to tackle high. He always has. But tackle through the midsection, okay, right there, and then it's you stay away from the helmet, okay, and you stay away from the legs, and you're not going to get penalized. Makes perfect sense. All right, so not a good day here for 79. Going to get the matchup again. Okay, this is it. This is what I was talking about, what he was scared about, okay? Now, he has low hands, okay? So the matchup, he's going to come over the top with a chop, okay? All right, now let it go. I'll let it go. This is uh, this is Michael Strahan got his last sack in the Super Bowl in his life with the chop club, same rush, okay? But he comes over the top, okay? And then he, he – and, but again, now Aaron, he, he, not, he knows he beat the man. He's over the top because he has low hands, right? So he comes over the top. And and you you don't you, as you can see can they see my hand? Oh, no sir. Hand? Oh, they can't. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right. But what you do is you open up your hand like really wide, okay? Like like you're like you're breaking, and you want to hit with your forearm, uh, hard with the whole forearm. You don't do it with just the hand on top of the arm. You want to do it with your forearm. The whole forearm to come down, so that way you ensure and as close to the elbow as you possibly can, okay, with the chop. And, and that's that's the key. If once, because your whole purpose is to control the upper arm of that blocker. You got to control the upper arm. If you control the upper arm, it's martial arts. I did martial arts in the Marine Corps a lot. And uh, if you control that upper arm, and, and you got to get to the back. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, in martial arts. 
but the, the upper body movement, if you're going to try to get behind a man, okay, to take him out. But it's the same the same principle. You've got to control that upper arm to get to the back. Okay, now go ahead and run it. Now, his hands are so fast. You can see the second move. What's he, see what he does with his, his – okay, so he hits with the first hand with a chop. See how the second hand's controlling the upper arm? It goes to the tricep. See what it's doing? Right there, it goes to the tricep. You're controlling the upper arm. OK, if you go way to the back, if you go way too far to the back, OK, he can still use that arm. But when you get to the back of that tricep, you control the upper arm. And that's the, that's the whole purpose of it. Now, his now again, and Aaron is Russian, and this is why he's so good, because you never stop. You, you, you never think that, that you're making sure he gets by, OK, by getting to the back of 71. And he gets to the he gets to the back of the arm, and he gets to the back of seventy one. Now the hips are turned. The offensive blocker has no chance whatsoever, none. Okay. Now he takes his left arm right here. Okay. Instead of ripping high and running, you don't rip high and running. You take that point of the elbow. You take that point of the elbow, and you throw it back into the blocker. You don't rip the run. You take that point of the elbow, and if, if you just if you who's, who's ever listened to this right now. I'm sitting in a chair, so rip halfway. Take that point of the elbow and just throw it. it try to get it to the back of the chair that spins around, and your hips turn. I, I I would never, ever run a hoop anymore, okay, because this runs a hoop. So if you look at Aaron's right hip, right hip, when he throws that elbow back, okay, it turns his feet right into the blocker, okay, when he did it, okay. So you can see his, his, his feet right now are pointed right to the quarterback. All right, let it go. See how he see how he, he spins them. <laughs> now Aaron just likes to body slam people. You know he just loves doing this. He just loves doing this. Okay. But so again, to your they, point, he 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 clubs at this ball again. He's going for the ball number one, and then you spin him so he can't throw. See that's the key. You spin him so you can't throw, and and, uh, and so if you just if you just tackle him and you try to get the ball, you know you miss the arm and he still can throw it down the field. And, and this is this is a key 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 thing on the quarterback, and it's they're not gonna they're not gonna flag you. It's just it looks like you're just laying the guy down. Now you Dude, mentioned really, before his hands are so fast, and just to bring it back for everybody that didn't see yeah. it, so his left hand he gets this chop here, yeah. and then with his right hand he's gonna reach get that back of that tricep as you mentioned. Yeah, I call it club. It's a club, but the the point is to get to the back of the tricep. Control the shoulder. You control the upper arm. You control the shoulder. You control the man. You control the upper arm, you control the shoulder, you control the man. And he does it beautifully there. Oh, yeah. He's a great technician. A lot of this, lot of this stuff was happening in my backyard. <clears throat> so I think we're going to have Aaron here, if I'm not mistaken. This is 2018, so I think he's got Sweezy on this one. Yeah. Now, this is – and this – and one thing about Aaron right now, okay, is he comes and he's, he's, he's rushed these guys a few times, so he knows, all right? But right now, okay, go ahead and run it. See the guy's inside foot? He's a short setter, okay? You see it? He's a yeah. short setter, all right? Okay? And then he is a puncher. So Aaron has got his hands on the outside. He's a, he's a puncher, and he's got a short, short setter, okay? But now he just goes right there. He goes into him, lets him have his body, but watch his shoulder turn. See how you can't even see 99? Right there for a second, it turns. So every great pass rush, okay, has shoulder turns somewhere. Okay, now watch his watch his right arm. Go ahead and let it run. Okay, see how it comes back. See how see see how it follows through. He's trying to get to the back. See, watch watch that arm. Watch the right arm. He's trying to get to the back. See, watch him follow through. He's not assuming. He wasn't assuming that he was free, and that's all part of the rush. Okay, let it run. And we're twisted again. <laughs> yeah, called Gator. Gator's better, Dan. Gator, 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 Gator. <laughs> a lot better, like wrestling an alligator. So talk me through this a little bit more here. Just the the preparation for coming back inside on this cross face move when you feel that jump set with that punch. What's he What's he need to do with his feet to get himself in position to come back across? No, he's just he's going in and let him have his body. So he's going in. He's gonna. It's okay to let it. Sometimes it's okay to let the blocker have your body because your jerseys are so tight it can't hold you. Okay. Now what what he does is he gets his hands on the outside of the frame because he knows the guy's a tight puncher. You know he's a tight puncher. But watch when Aaron 
Aaron, at the moment of truth, what do you think he's pulling on? He's pulling on the back of the tricep, pulling on yep. the arm. Okay. And then he gets, and then he's, see how he pulls on the tricep? He controls the upper body right there. You see it? Yeah. Shut the right back. Tricep. Look at it. it threw the guy forward. Okay. Throws him forward. Not a good day for Sweezy on that one. Oh, man. You guys are getting all the secrets, baby. <laughs> We're enjoying it. We're enjoying it here. And all the all secrets. Right. So let's look at Denver here. I think this is uh, Alex. I think this is Leary. He's got. Well, you know, this is what's awesome. Okay, and and this happens to him a lot. All right, so you can see, and most centers are going to do this. You see, there's no backs, and this is what the first center of the Vikings should have done. The offensive line coach, really? Come on, man. Okay, this is what he gets a lot, but at the same time, okay. He's like he gets out there and he's he's trying to get the same inside move that he just did. It's exactly the same, but the center's there to meet him. Okay, and now he's stuck, but he knows right now. But Ben gets his eyes on the quarterback, and what he's doing is saying, "Okay, I'm I'm right here. I know it's empty. I know the ball's going to come out fast. Okay, and I'm going to be in position now to be able to just you know play volleyball. I'm going to say let's play volleyball. My daughter was a volleyball player. Play volleyball now because we're going to try to knock the ball down if he throws it in my area. Go ahead." He's in position to play volleyball. See what he's doing? See? He's waiting, and all of a sudden the guy takes off. Okay. Well, Aaron's four six. Okay. So go ahead. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. This guy falls down, so he just pancakes him. I love it. I just like how he's got the presence of mind to make sure he stays in all in all the throwing windows there. Yeah, yeah. He's he's in good football position. I mean, that's why he was voted the number one player in the NFL. I mean, he's He's, he's special. But, you know, we did all these movements, okay, and what I call MMT, master my technique. Slow becomes smooth. Smooth becomes fast. Speed wins in the NFL. We do all these things I'm talking about in slow motion. The guy that's matched up with him, he's, he is the offensive lineman. He does the setting. He does the outside foot body language, okay? He does the hands exactly how the blocker is all week long. That way you don't have to worry about a scout team guy trying to do it because they're not going to do it. You used to ask him to do that, and it's just it's worthless. They might do a play, and then they forget, okay? So we were we got thousands of reps, and uh, at the end of my career, I basically threw every sled away except for the pop-ups, you know, the pop-up rush things. That's the only thing I would use, okay, because I did a lot of bone-on-bone, bone, flush on flush, and I said, oh, it hurts? Too bad. It's what you get paid for, okay? But we're doing it. We're going to – it's physical game, and then you're actually performing more repetitions on the, the man itself. And in martial arts, what do you do? You don't you don't have sleds and stuff like that. You know, and I was the biggest sled guy ever. I had some of the most beautiful training tape ever. But uh, in modern day, 2020, you don't need them anymore. And I think every high school coach will love it, okay? Because it's just you just work bone on bone, flush on flush. And I'm talking about run game and everything. Okay. And I'll get into the I'll get into the power rush and how it can, goes hand in hand with the run game in a little bit. Okay, go ahead, Dan. So you talked about the you know inside foot, outside foot, in this case of the guard. So when you're seeing uh, 75 here with his toes pointed the way he is, what's going through your mind in terms of what kind of set he might take? Well, I think obviously the outside foot all the way across the line, it's pass. You know, you can go, you got it back in the backfield. You know what I mean? Look at look at how how their outside foot's back. So everybody on the other side, and I don't know what the bound distance is, but if it was first and ten, everybody's thinking rush the passer because you're looking at the the, the body language of the offensive lineman. But sure. you're just studying again, Dan. It's right back to the weak study. I mean, you they already you already know what seventy five does, and it's percentages. He'll do something else, okay? But we play the percentages, okay? It's it's going to be eighty to ninety percent. Makes sense. Overset here. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> okay. All right. So now the center comes, okay? And and Aaron again, all right? So what he does, now watch what he does to the left upper arm. Go ahead. Run it. Watch what he does to the upper arm. He gets into the center, okay? See what he does to the upper arm? See it? He puts his, he puts his arm, he gets right there, he gets his arm right up by the elbow, 
And look what he does to the upper arm. So you, you do the upper arm and he's got it. So look what he does. See what he does to the blocker. <laughs> See, it's the upper arm. So you, the, the upper arm controls the shoulder. See, he doesn't. He, he's right there. That's the, that's the secret right here. Now, I wished I had this stuff when I was coaching the Giants, man. I mean, this is stuff that, you know, this is stuff that I developed after coaching the Giants. Okay. Some of it, a lot of it's the same, but lot, some of it is different. Okay. So we saw this, you know, this move with him coming back into the A gap before. And again, you mentioned him pinning that outside arm. I just want to show people again how consistently, yeah, when he, when he gets that arm over again, he follows through with that. No question. Never stop your hands. And then sets up a second move on the second blocker. <laughs> yeah. But what he's doing is he's going right to, he's going right to that upper arm. You see. How many guys were you around that could string that kind of stuff together? You know, have the presence of mind to come off a of one and take two. Let's watch, let's watch ninety some. Let's see what Michael or Michael Brockers. You know, he did a lot of that stuff. What, you, what you're doing is I I only taught four things. You know, I only taught four movements, and we just did them over and 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 over again. And then what we did is we matched them up to the blockers, you know. So I taught everybody the same. It didn't matter if it was Morgan Fox who just signed again with the Rams, you know, and he came from the University of Colorado. Pablo. And then Chris Cooper, who was with me at the Raiders, and he went to the University of Nebraska. Omaha, you know, I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter if they come from those small places or or if they uh, they come from, uh, you know, LSU like Michael Brockers. So same sure. stuff. Same stuff. So let's see what he gives 68 here. See, Michael, look at Michael Barkers right here. Look at, look at Michael. Michael's over there at the right end. He should never be over there, but they, they, they did crazy stuff with him. Uh, but, but uh, you know, watch the same thing. Same inside move, all right? Okay, see it right there? Yep. You can see how his hand came back? You can see his hand came back, but he should have he should have finished it more. He should have finished it more. The back picks him up. The back's not there. Guess where Michael is? <laughs> sure. See, so. You asked me, did I teach the same? I taught the same stuff to everybody. The only guys that are playing right there that I coached are, um, are uh, 90 and uh, uh, 99. Okay. So 99 here, he's got a loop a little bit. So what do you, what are you think it, here? With, you got to come to the C-gap. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a blitz. So, you know, it's, um, you know, uh, Wade Phillips, you know, he called, he called a, uh, see the, the, and the backer dropping off. Okay. So it's just it's just his own dog, okay, and it's an illusion as, as if they're bringing five, and they're not. They're only bringing four with a blitz look, okay. And they can look at and they freeze it, stop, okay, right there. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. So uh, blockers, okay, one, two, three, yeah, six, seven. So you have seven blockers, okay, seven blockers and four rushers. All right, go ahead. Look what he does. See the lift that he gets right now? Okay, now run it back, okay? Now, let's talk run defense, okay? So get around right there. Let's go, go. keep going, keep going, and stop. Stop. Let's stop run defense. Now, every time we get off, you, you the reason you got to get off, okay, is to get into the offensive lineman as quickly as possible, no matter what, run or pass, okay? Got to get it to him as quickly as possible. Uh, learn this from Jack Dunblood. Deacon Jones and Merlin Olson taught him that you have to close the distance between you and the blocker as quickly as possible. Then you have to close the distance between you and the running back as quickly as possible. Or you have to close the distance between you and the quarterback as quickly as possible. And that that's the whole thought of get off. That's what that's what get off's there. So in the run game, I teach exactly the same thing. As power, it's a power rush or bull rush. Okay, I don't ever call it a bull rush. I called it a power rush because you have to have power. Power is strength times speed in a physics lab. On a football field, it's I mean, excuse me, it's force times velocity in a physics lab, but it's strength times speed on a football field. So you're putting your strength and speed together. Now, reason Aaron is is what he is. Okay, he has power beyond your wildest dreams. He's Mike Tyson, okay, that just has uh, a gift, okay? Uh, 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 he's the Russian in the Rocky movie that just, uh, when he punched the, the, the meter, uh, you know, the thing that registered uh, the power of his punch, that's Aaron Donald. 
but right here don't matter who it is so when you're gonna you're gonna power rush okay or bull rush all right you're doing the exact same thing in a run game so we did this at the uh at the giants i, I came up with this word and i said i said we got to lift the blocker and strahan goes wow that's the word man that's it we got to lift the blocker and then that's it that's what we started doing that back in about 2004 and started lifting blockers and you can see aaron right now he's got both hands in there but you just don't you don't you just don't lock out you lift the blocker with your entire lower body. Mike Tyson knocked guys out because the punch came from the ball of his foot, not from the upper body. It's the same concept. So you put all those big muscles into the lift. Okay, watch what happens. Go ahead. Watch the lift. See how he lifts them right there? And he's lifting them. Okay, keep going. See how? Look at the offensive lineman. He's lifting them. Okay. And right there it is. And then what happens is if you see the blocker's shoulders turn, you lift to a long arm, okay, which is his, he uses the left arm, and you just lift to one arm so he can't hold you, okay, and that's what he does, and look at how he turns the blocker's shoulders. Now, I know Aaron used to straighten the left arm out because I saw the blocker's shoulders turn, so that's cause and effect. Simple stuff. That's exactly the same thing I do in the run game, okay? So you're going to lift, and if it's going to your left, you go to the long arm, to your, your left arm. Long arm's your left arm. You're going to lift, and if he's going to the right, you go to the long arm, okay, to the right. And what happens, coaches, okay, it, I never – I go, I don't know. It's one of the coolest things ever, and I just don't know how it works. But when you lock that arm out, your left hips, your hips will catch up. They will they will follow that arm. They will follow that arm. I used to tell those guys – we used to have a drill. It was called a pop-back drill. I put them in poor position and they just lock out that left arm and they look at that left hand and the hips just go over there like a magnet's pull them that way. <laughs> Big secret, man. Okay. Big secret. And I do this. So when you want to talk bull rush and power rush with Mike Waffle, I do the same thing in the run game. It's exactly the same movement it, every single time. You get it, you get to get into the blocker and all of a sudden he's going that way. You might be behind the block, but if you're doing that, your hips are going in that direction. And the blocker is going to be put into the hole, okay? So your genius coordinators out there and sit there and used to go, hey, oh my God, you're supposed to be in your gap. I'm not in my gap, but he's in my gap, okay? And he's going in that direction, okay? It don't matter. Somebody's in that area. We're just not in the area. And so many times we knock blockers back. Running backs are run right into the, the offensive lineman, okay, who's in our gap, okay? And all of a sudden the blocker comes to us, okay? So – um, that's kind of how my philosophy works on that. It's not a textbook by no means, okay, all the time, but it works. Uh, clearly, clearly. And uh, got, got his results here. Yeah. All right, so we're lined up over on this side. Now he's at left, on the left side, I should say. Yeah, left three. That's a, that's a three technique. Now this this is the same. This is a pressure again. Okay, hold on. Okay, well it's yeah it's it's the way they're doing it. Um, he's looping outside. It's a three man rush. Okay, and uh, and so what they're doing is they got ninety six. See how ninety six Matt falls behind uh, Aaron there. Yeah, he, he's just covering. Okay, so this is really a spy situation. Okay. But, you know, look at Aaron anyway. So when he does this now, all he's doing, we just go through the pop-ups. You see, again, he's doing the same. See the shoulder turn? See yep. the shoulder turn? Clubs, okay? No, wait back. Go back. Go back, back. Okay. The first movement. So, you know, watch what happens to his shoulders. Watch 99. See? He get, he's, you know, keep going. Keep going. You'll see it when it first hits. Uh, it's hard to catch. It's hard to catch. It happens fast. But every great rush has shoulder turn, okay? But, again, watch him follow through. He'll follow through. And then the blocker falls down. You know, he follows through. Now, look what he does in the next blocker. <laughs> <laughs> so, what he does when the guy comes, okay, now look what he's doing. He's taking the, again, he, he doesn't rip the run with that right arm. He does not rip the run. He stops halfway, okay, and then he he, he points it back. He brings it back in towards the blocker, and that's what turns his hips so fast. Okay, right there. He's All he's doing is that mechanic. You just you take you just take that elbow. He's taking that elbow, and I can I know he's doing that. Okay, because this that up that right elbow controls his hips, his left hip. That's why his hips turn so fast. So he takes that elbow and throws it back. Let it go. That's a, there's no hoop. It doesn't have to have a hoop. You don't need a hoop. 
So that's a, an interesting thing because the the theory of the hoop stuff's been around, and in fact, I've seen people measure cornering or assess the ability to corner by watching someone run a hoop, maybe with like a a tennis ball down on a cup to pick up as you're going along. Um, talk to me about so if this does this mechanism work for everybody? If you have a player with more hip stiffness, can you still get this kind of cornering with that mechanism? It's exactly that's what it does. It turns your hips. It's you know the well, here's the problem, okay, uh, with the hoops. And John Turling, God bless him, he just passed away on, on May 10th. He was my mentor. He taught me everything in the beginning. He's the best defensive line coach in the history of the NFL. Uh, results, uh, you know, uh, production, all that stuff. And he 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 taught me all this in the beginning. Well, it was a hell of a lot easier back in the '90s when he was running the hoops, okay. Because the offensive linemen were not as good as they are right now. I gain all kinds of respect for every offensive line coach and for every offensive lineman in the National Football League. And for me to think, or anybody to think, that you can speed rush on a regular basis, you're crazy. You can't. You can't. Unless you have the speed. I mean, you're Von Miller, okay, or uh, Mac. you know, those guys, well, they can speed rush because they have that kind of speed. And uh, when you have that kind of speed, those hoops are good. Now, I don't, I don't, I'm not against the hoops, okay, but I'm, I'm more for, uh, you know, the combat. It's combat now. I mean, it's just the way it is. And you can control your own body. You can, again, I'm going to say it 100,000 times, you don't rip to run. You rip halfway, and you, put that, you take that point of the shoulder and try to stick it in somebody's back, okay, and then, and then you get to the back. And, and you, can't, you can't sit in the chair. You can't sit in the chair. You can sit in the chair. You can move your arms like you're running, okay, and, and and you're not going anywhere in the chair. But if you stop halfway and you take that elbow and you try to stick that elbow in the back of the chair, look what happens to your hips. Watch your sure. hips. You can stand up. You can stand up and do it. You can't stand still. Your hips turn, and that's what he's doing with that arm. It helps turn your hips to get turn to the quarterback. Go ahead. So it's a fascinating piece, like I said, because it's it it differs from what a lot of people get taught in the evaluation space. And so I really like hearing uh, you talk that through because I think it'll be really helpful to people to grow in that eval space. I mean, this 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 stuff. If you watch Michael Brockers doing the same thing, run it back. He, these, these guys used to all the time. They run that back. Look at number ninety. He's doing the same thing. Watch his left elbow. Watch his left elbow right there. You see it. Watch it. Watch his numbers. Watch his numbers. Right. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. There, you see it? All he's doing is just taking that freaking elbow right there, that left elbow. See it? His left yeah. Elbow. That's why his body turns like that. Look at his hips. Yeah, Look he's probably pointing at the quarterback. His hips. Yeah. It's a bad day at the office for that quarterback. <laughs> All right, so here we are, the right three technique. Yep. For everybody at home. See, now look what he does. See what he does? Okay, now watch. See, don't I, you know what you know what I used to do when I watched pass rush with the guys? I never look at them. I just watch the offensive lineman all the time. I want to see cause and effect. So I watch the offensive lineman here. Okay, now watch it. Aaron destroys him with his right arm when he makes the decision. When he makes the decision, look what he does with his right arm. Okay, watch the blocker. Just keep going. Watch the blocker. See it? It was all yeah. the right arm. All the right arm. See, he, he made that right arm longer. Okay, he just he, all he did was put his force behind that right arm and straighten that arm, and look look at the blocker's shoulders. Not the direction he wants to be pointed. That's for sure. No, but that's how you turn him. It's that long arm. So, you talked about the power that he's able to generate. I mean, just watching him get his hips all the way through when he gets that extension. I mean, he's you know. He just unloads so much power. My goodness gracious! But anybody, anybody can do it now. I'm just telling you, anybody can do it. It's 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 body mechanics. The, 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 you can take you 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 can go out and, and try to move a rock, okay, with, with a hammer. But then if you get one of those big old crowbars, you're going to move it a lot easier. There's no difference. It's physics, okay. And if you get good leverage, you can do this with anybody. Uh, you, you know how you teach martial arts, and you can teach martial arts and you master 150 movements and you can beat a man. Okay. But we're not mastering 150 movements here. Okay. We're, we've got four things we're doing in pass rush. And one of them is the exact same thing we do in a run game. 
that uh, that simplicity is beautiful right there. See, if you watch Michael, run it back. You watch Michael Brockers. He's he's a, he's a left end. He knows. When it comes to the truth, see how he, you know, watch him lift the blocker, and then he and then he uses his right arm to go to the one arm. Okay, now watch. He's in position. See, he puts his helmet down. He's lifting him. Okay, and then he handles him with his right arm. You see it? Yep. Right. Go. Oh, that's it. And see, all he had to do is just outload, and then he escapes off of it. Just never stays in that fully locked out position. Like, you, you know, you mentioned they keep getting underneath one shoulder and taking it that way. Yeah. I mean, if you go back and you you watch, you think the Rams back when I was coaching them all the, at the end, okay? They, they, I mean, you know, the, the numbers are ridiculous, okay? And uh, we didn't have the, the, the winning type team, okay? And we, we we were ranked like top defensive line in the NFL, all right? And that you watch, you watch those guys work. I mean, holy cow, it's fun to watch, man. Robert Quinn, Chris Long, Wim Hayes, you know, I mean, uh, they're fun to watch, man. Fun to watch. Yes, you know, they fun were. To, like, fun to watch, you know. All right, go ahead. Right three technique again. <laughs> uh, speed. That's the that's speed, but watch his hips again. He could watch his left arm when it comes to the moment of truth. Go ahead. It's a speed rush. It's just speed. See his left arm right there. There it is. See, he did the elbow. That's helpful. He did the elbow right back. You, you notice he's – see, you, you see so many times you guys are ripping to run, ripping to run. See, you used to watch them run and rip and that how rip would be – God, almost over – almost behind their head. You never see that with Aaron, okay, because the secret is is take that elbow right back into the blocker, and that turns the hips. There it is. It's just a speed rush. I mean, that's what I do on a speed rush too. I mean, if if I had my if I had my gathers, okay, I brush like this every time, but it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just interested in this track too, because he widens a little bit just to mess with the set points. Yeah. And this is again something you think is on film study. Yeah, I was expecting him to be a little bit shorter, and then he just bends around it. Yeah, I mean, look at he just knows he knows the guy's an oversetter, and he knows he turns. Okay, so run it back. Okay, so. He's right now 66. All right. Watch his inside foot over setter. Watch his, watch his outside foot. He turns like crazy. So Aaron knows he turns. When he when they turn like that, you can speed rush. See it? See how he turns? Yeah. It falls right back to the beginning of this tape. That that preparation, that study is clearly very impactful, and he translates it well. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of things, you know, like uh, uh, right now, he's he's he, right now. He's, he's got his inside, but watch this. Look at his stance. See how it's different? It's just, I was going to ask you about knows. that because he switches up to his other hand. Yeah, he knows he's getting an inside move right now. He's 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 making it look like he's going to run a track. Like He looks like he's about ready to run a freaking 100 meters. Okay? <laughs> you know? And he knows he knows he's going inside. He's doing it on his second step, on his, uh, his uh, first step. Go, go right there. Watch, watch him go. First step. Bam. He comes right off. He knows he's going to hit it on his first step. Because he, switch, he switches to his other hand. Yeah, he knows right now because he, he's going to hit him. He's going to hit him with the inside move on his first step. It's either his first step or his third step. But he decided to do it right away. It's his first step, and he hit him. <laughs> uh, I, just love, I just love the way he, you know. He, but you notice, okay, he has his own little way of, of spinning the quarterbacks, you know. Okay, and he he loves this. Just stand up and throw him on, throw him down. That's just him. That's his little signature. I'm just watching that right arm again as you keep talking about combat and him slinging it back here again. Yeah, always, but, always making sure that hand's not connected. Yeah, but you, you notice Dan that that uh, he doesn't rip the run with that arm. See, he keeps it halfway so he can turn the hip. <laughs> He's having a good day at the office there. You know, you know what's the greatest thing about Aaron Donald? Okay, and all you coaches out there, you can teach him. Uh, the, the, he went to the University of Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh shares the same facility as the Steelers. And Mike Tomlin and I are good friends, and Mike came up to me at the uh, Combine, and he goes, you know, you'd be proud of your boy. And I said, why is that? He goes, oh, it was probably about uh, six days, wasn't even a week yet, after the season was over with. And I'm up in my office at like 6 o'clock in the morning, and then I look out the window, and he's walking into the facility to work out. And his car was there mostly the, almost the whole day. It's a different, it's a different mentality. Well, I know, but I mean, if, if anybody wants to be great, that's what you got to do. I, 
remember I asked Michael Strahan, if you look at Michael Strahan's statistics in his formative years, okay, there were, there was no production. And then all of a sudden I asked, I said, Michael, what happened? He goes, he says, Waff, I just woke up one day and I just decided if I'm going to do this, I might as well be the best. And, you know, I'm just, and he had to work hard to do it. And, and I can honestly say the best years uh, that I ever had as a football player, I had the best off-season training. And, and, and you, you, you can't fool any game. You can't play golf. you got to practice golf. You know, it's, it's anything. You can't fool anything. You have, to, you have to work hard at it. So if you want to win a world championship, you got to work hard all the time. Well, Aaron certainly does that. Mm-hmm. So Sweezy gets his second shot at him here in 2018. So, well, okay, <laughs> he's he's trying, he's trying, he's get both hands in there, he's trying to get to the one arm, but he's got so much body leaning into him. So he starts in a low pad level again. I wanted to have a license plate, low pad level equals feet, okay. L P L F E E T. I wanted a California license plate. I wanted to have that. And I told the guys that because low pad level does equal feet. Okay. And so it doesn't matter what you do. You come in there with low pad level. Okay. You, you lift the blocker and you get to that long arm. Now look what he does with the right arm. Okay. At the end, because the shoulder, the, the shoulders are turning. Watch the shoulders of the blocker turn. Yeah. Worry about Aaron. Look at this. Look at the shoulders. See, see, he was trying to get that. See right there. See, he was, that's what he was doing. Now it gets tripped up, but Look what he does to the blocker. Right? He's turning the shoulders, and then all of a sudden he tripped up, and then the guy buries him. It's too easy. He gets clipped from behind. Was so the center had to come and help and, and move him over the tackles feet there to have any chance? Yeah, I mean, it still takes Wilson I, down. I watch it. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here and watch Sue. I want to throw up. Okay, he, he didn't do. Anything. He's not working. I mean, you got to work this stuff, man. He ain't doing nothing. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, look at Fowler. Look at Fowler. What are you doing? What are you doing? I said that that's exactly what I'd say in the meeting room. Where, where, where's the technique? I mean, where is it? That's what I would say. I, I sit there and I watch. I watch the. I just sit and I'm, I'm just a fan, man. I'm, my first favorite team was the New York Giants. There was no AFL when I was a young kid. My second favorite team was in became the Buffalo Bills. Okay, and in high school, my high school was the Red Raiders in Hornell, New York. Okay, and then I became a Raider fan, and then. My head coach from Utah State was the running Eric Dickerson's running back coach, and I became I recruited Los Angeles, and I became a, a Rams fan. Okay, and those are my four favorite teams. All right, what four four, te- four teams did I coach with in twenty years? <laughs> well, I was going to say you kind of hit all your marks. Nobody can say that. Nobody, but I coached at my four favorite teams, and I wear I wear uh, colors on all those teams. You know, I, I, I favored I favored Rams because I'm I'm here locally and and all that, but but. Uh, I, I love all four of those teams. So talk to me a little bit about some of the differences in alignment and if that creates any challenges, because he's here underneath Littleton. Uh, we can't see him real well, but with this kind of wide alignment, what is that? Does that, you know, change or impact anything or create expectations from what you are going to see from the offense? Who, who are the best athletes on a football field? Oh, I bet you different position coaches might give you some different answers on that one. No, but the best athletes on the football field are normally the skill positions, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to put a basketball team together, what are you going to do, right? Who are the worst athletes on a football field? I'm talking about athletes. Those are usually your bigger guys. Yeah, the offensive linemen, right? Okay, so what you do with your alignment, you make you you create you make them come out into your world. That's that's what that's why you, you line a little bit wider, or, or you just get them out of their comfort zone. You try to get them to come out into space. It, it gives you an advantage. Well, let's see what it does for him here. Well, they got a game. I mean, they, they're 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 really running a they're running a blitz here. Okay, so really, you know. Um, this is this is designed for number for uh, Corey Littleton, okay, number fifty eight. So they, they know right now in the protection that that, that Stu and Aaron are going to occupy the blockers, okay, and then Corey's going to come right up in the middle. This is this is this is just Wade, good stuff. Now the, the guy who does a good job right here is is Sue. He finally doing some technique. He's getting his body into the gap. He's got shoulder turn right there. He's trying to get to the back of the blocker. 
But then when the blocker comes off to pick up Corey, he's in great position. So he's putting himself in position. And there he is. Okay. All right. So now again, run it back. Okay. And just watch, just watch Aaron's left arm. Okay. Just watch his left arm. Watch how he doesn't rip to run with it. See how he's bringing it back into the blocker right there. Yeah. See it? Go ahead. You can see his fist here, guys. Just not you know the old days you'd see that damn arm ripped up so high, but look, he's using that arm and he uses the blocker to turn his hips. Look what happens. Just, boop, see it right there. At the, oh, you can see it at the end. You can see it there. Run it back. Run it back. Run it back. You got a good shot of that. Are they going to see this in slow mo right there? Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Yeah. It's a good shot. You can see it. I mean, like you said, pointed right there. Closing yeah, speed. Here we come. Yeah. Look at the right hip. Left elbow controls the right hip. Right elbow controls the left hip. So our right three technique now. I think this was that Mexico City game. It was about 700 points scored. Yeah. Well, he's he's right now. He's just he's just stuttering. He just, I mean, he just he's just stuttering. He's just he's trying to get to see how he's just doing little body shakes and stuff, you know. And and the guy starts leaning. So when he when when he leans, when he starts leaning, all Aaron does is push his arms down. He brought his arms down. And, and watch, you can watch, I see, I, I'm not watching Aaron. I don't watch Aaron. I just watch the blocker. I don't. I don't care what Aaron's doing. I just look at cause and effect. See, I mean, look at 56. Okay, run it back. Look at 56. Okay, let's let's look at some of these other guys. Okay, all right. So he goes in there to power rush. So I'm watching 56. And I go, what are you doing? Lift it to a. Where's your long arm? Where's your long arm? Where's your long arm? Where's your long arm? Where is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I said, no, you, you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Well, let's watch the other guy's suit. What have you done to the blocker suit? Keep going. Keep going. See, he did. He, he did, but he just, he got picked up by the center. But he was doing it. Look at his right arm. Look at the sh shoulders of the blocker. He had him. He had him. But it's cause and effect. What are you doing, 50? Nothing. Look at 50. Doing nothing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Got his hands caught and trapped. Yeah, he's doing nothing. So I, that's what I do. I just look at, you know, I sit there and you go, I, I, I expect something out of everybody, every play. Otherwise, come over and stand by me because you're doing nothing. I really like that point of watching the offensive line. We've talked about that at some other positions. Uh, if you're watching receivers, watch some of the DBs, see if they can manipulate them, stuff like that. But, again, the cause and effect of watching the linemen in this progression yeah. makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I mean, you – you're not going to win every time, okay? But I want to see. I, I want to see mechanics. You know, 50s. I remember this play. I mean, he, he did nothing and got a touchdown. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's listening too. I really do. I don't care. <laughs> I never really cared what players thought. I love them all, but it's a, it's a dog eat dog business, man. You know, there's so no you doubt. Wanna, you want to be the best. You better. You know, you want to be the best. You got to you got to work this stuff, man. All right. So look at he's going over the top. See how he's going. Look at look at how he works the seventy fives upper arm. See it? I want to try to get the right shot of this yeah. chop. Yeah, the chop. This is this is OC. And, oh, it's so fast. <laughs> and, and, well, that's that's the hard part about it. Okay, that's what I talk about speed. You know, we we we. That's what I'm saying. We do this stuff in slow mo and slow mo. And I say like we'll be working. Okay, I says it's all. You know, you're working your technique. Okay, so what happens is you have your rush plan. My rush plan for this week. Okay, the chop club is going to be one of them. All right, inside move might be the other. Okay, because it matches up to the blocker. Right. So if you have low hands, you're going to chop. If a guy's a big pump puncher and he's a straight arm puncher, you ain't going to chop nothing. You ain't chopping nothing. But if you're you got to match up the technique. You got to match up to the hand, the hands to the to the the five things that I gave you. Okay. So this guy's a low hand guy, but the key thing is, and this is a beautiful spot where you stopped it, Dan, right there. Okay. Because his second thing, look what he's, how he's trying to control the shoulder with that right eye, right hand right there. That's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. All right. Let it go. Okay. All right. There again. That's okay, right yeah, 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 but watch. Okay. Now watch the elbow, watch the elbow and watch the right hip. Watch the elbow, watch the right hip. Okay, let it go. You're so right because I, I, I'm just – I think this might be the shot to really drill this home because I can't tell you how many times I got taught or, hell, even when I started coaching was teaching that rip, right? And you were in this position, you'd sell, get up under his armpit and lift and all that stuff. And to watch his hips turn when he throws this left elbow, 
back inside. It's it's instantaneous. Yeah, yeah. I mean he. And we get to be done. No, let me run it back, 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 run it back. Okay. Now watch the watch the lift on the blocker. So the blocker reengages. Now watch his left arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had him off the ground. I got a beautiful picture. Okay. And in the crown of the old giant stadium was you couldn't see the feet, you know, of the opponent across the stadium. Okay. And Michael Strahan was right on the top of that crown. And Joe Staley was a rookie. And we're playing the 49ers. And Michael went into a lift to the long arm. And he, Michael, it was his last year, you know, and he had a photographer taking uh, pictures of snapshots of every rush. And frame by frame, you can see the two hands lift the blocker and then the long arm come and in Joe, Joe <laughs> Bailey in a uniform had to weigh at least 340 with a helmet and everything. And he's off the ground, two to three feet off the ground. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen captured on film. And, and I had that. It's in my other house in Northern California. And, and But I love the, that segment of those pictures right there. And that is that is it in a nutshell, okay, the lift to the long arm. Because you, you're gonna, you, you have to do it in modern-day football to prevent holding. I used to be the biggest crybaby, okay, with the officials. And I was a crybaby, too, um, about the holding, okay? But they, were, they weren't calling it. So I had, I had to come up with something else, okay? And this is the answer to the holding. Watch Aaron's left arm and just watch the blocker. It's yeah, I was going to say, he's he's tilted. You can tell that right side's off the ground. He's lifting him. He's off the ground. He lifted him off the ground with one arm. One arm. <laughs> now, see, he doesn't – see, again, now watch, watch the quarterback, okay? So he's going for the ball, but he doesn't stop. He keeps rolling like he's wrestling an alligator. You see it? Yep. You see it? You know, he did. And see, see what happens with the quarterback's head, okay? Boom, that whiplash effect right there. Okay, enough said. That's another reason we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Snuck that one in there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm having more fun than you are. Okay, now I learned this from Aaron. Okay, um, when he when he swipes. Okay, right here. That's that swipe action right there. He, he, he does both hands at the same time. He does both hands at the same time. And he see right there when he's doing it. And again, you can see the shoulder turn. Okay. So you get a puncher. Well, that's what you do. Okay. You swipe. He's trying to get both hands. Okay. He's trying to get both hands. Okay. To hit outside the hands. Okay. He doesn't care. He's trying to get outside the blocker's hands. So when you swipe, you're, again, you're trying to get to that upper arm. You, and you're going to use both your hands outside that gap hand, both hands. And Aaron, Aaron did it at Pitt. And I showed him the clip and I go, I go, man, that is the coolest thing ever, you know? And, and it's something he came up with. It was really cool. I used to try to get one hand to hit the inside hand like he is right now, and one hand hitting the outside hand. Not good enough. It puts you outside the blocker. You want to get both hands outside the hands. And this is used against a puncher. But now he rips the run. Watch how he puts his arm way up in the air when he's running. He's ripping the run right now. Watch it. Watch how he rips that arm. He ain't ripping the run. He's sticking the elbow into the body. <laughs> and he turns his hip. You see it? Yeah. Most coaches say, rip high, rip high, rip high, rip high. No, he turned his hip. All he had to do is turn his hip when he took that elbow. You take that elbow and he's sticking it right in his ribs and it turns his hip. Right there when his hip turns, that's how he controlled it. He controlled it with his left arm. And then Gator. Gator. He's trying to Gator. But it's hard for the quarterback to throw, you see. No matter what, his body would be turning. Back over on the left side. Yeah. Now he moved into he moved. I was just gonna I was just gonna ask you about this slight adjustment yeah. back inside he's, here. Yeah, he's he's going power to inside. He he knows right now he's gonna power the guy. Okay, and now he's but he does is he just lifts with his right arm, watch his right arm. Watch the blocker shoulder. Just watch the blocker. It's the right arm that controlled him when he did it. Uh, you, you, it's hard to stop on that. You have to see, let it go fast. But that's all he did. And now watch what he's doing when he's coming over the top. He's getting to the back of the shoulder. Getting the back of that tricep. You see it? That's the key. That's how he got by. He, he's going to the back of the tricep with his with his left arm. He's going to the back of the blocker's tricep. Watch. So you keep it tight. See, he's going to the back of his yep. arm. See it? Yep. Once you. 
once you control the back of his shoulder right there, you're home free. And then he sinks that right elbow in on the second. Yeah, yeah and then I guess it, 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 it turned his hip, but he's, he's pressing against 60 with his right elbow. He's not ripping to run. So See, that's why you never, you never see that high rip. That that pressure of that elbow is sticking right into number 60. I, so I think we can get a shot of it here because you're gonna you talked about the control of this this right hand and what he does. You're gonna yeah. see him move right there. Yeah, he moved the shoulder. Okay, now he's he's controlling the upper arm. That's what he's he's doing, is controlling the upper arm. Now he's going for the back of the tricep with his left arm elbow look at it look at he's going to the back of the tricep you see it yep so he's going right to the back of the tricep okay now watch what he does with his right elbow you can he goes, see he takes his the right elbow. Here, he's prepping his right arm yeah now his right arm is going back into the back into that uh blocker right there okay and then it sets his hips right towards the quarterback see now see how his hip turned just turned enough to get to the quarterback best thing he did is get the ball out again again he had such number one a number one. That's a, that's a, that's our main objective. A quarterback position for all you coaches out there is the most vulnerable player on the field to cause a fumble. And he, I mean, with, <laughs> we've seen what four of them, I think, so far, and just this exposure. Yeah. And this isn't the whole season. It's number one, man. It's number. It's number one. It's all you're thinking about. It's all you're thinking. You're not tackling them. Oh, this is great. It's chop club all the way. Oh. OCU Minora. That's OCU. One, two, three. You see it right there. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Right let's bring that, let's bring that back. We'll slow it down for everybody. There it is. There it is. His hands were so I fast. I don't know if everybody is, saw it. IU potty, too, man. He beat, he, 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 this is not his first rodeo using this against him. That's IU potty, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. I think it is. Okay. Alex, you want to verify what we got for 78 here in 2018? But there's that left hand. There's that yeah. chop. Top. It's over the top. Okay. To, he's, going to, he's working to the club. But see, look at the shoulder turn. See, the harder you club, the harder you club, the more shoulder turn you get. Okay. Now watch when he comes over the top. See how he's going to come back to the upper arm. So he's yep. coming back to follow through. He's coming back and he's pushing himself. You're going to use that hand to use his body to push you into the quarterback. Oh. See how he gators him? <laughs> I love it. He just loves doing this. He just likes throwing. He's like, I don't want to swear, but I just <laughs> you can you can let loose if you need to. This is this no, is I, I, I don't I don't want to. I just out of respect. Okay, but um. You know, but you know, it's 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 just his way of just like sending a message. I love it, and it's safe. It's safe. You know, it's so this, it is safe. This is uh, Arizona was hurt, and they were obviously going through a few names here. Colby Gossett was seventy eight. Colby's not not feeling good the day after this one. No, no, that's that's I was thinking. I remember I potty with it, but it's too easy. It's like stealing. It's like stealing. He he can't do anything to stop that. I, the best, the best chop club guy I had, uh, um, because he was so fast, was OC. OC, and OC probably got the ball out more than anybody else. Man, I mean, it was amazing. And then yeah, Robert Quinn, Rob, Robert Quinn, Robert Quinn studied OC when you to death. Robert Quinn was one of the most beautiful, beautiful chop club guys. But it was hard for him to come over the top because his arms were so long. So he used to finish with a rip and to the point. Okay, and that was that's how he turned. He'd come around that corner like crazy. Well, Colby's going to have to continue to battle here. We had him in a see. wide alignment. Yeah. Oh. oh, this again. This is a great job. Great job by Sue. Sue does this whole thing. Um, I had I, I I met with the uh, a Canadian football league. I was on uh, uh, a Zoom call the other day. Okay, and we were watching. We were doing film. I did uh, coaching him up, and he was asking me about pass rush games. And I said, "This is what you do in pass rush games." These offensive linemen just sit there and stand there and punch on you all day long, okay? But when you run a game, you get a little payback, okay? And this is a payback right here. This You get a, you come in there with your pad level as low as you can, and you just freaking send a message to those guys, you know, and come in there and be physical, knock the crap out of them. You know, he, he hits them with his forearm right here, okay, no, number 64. He hits the center with his forearm, knocks them down. And now when, when you're doing pass rush game, coaches, okay, you're trying to get a two-on-one on number 70 on the guard. So the first penetrator, he's 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 it's a two on one right now. We're getting a two on one on him. That's, that's the answer, okay. Now Aaron is selling the outside rush, and he's hitting on his third step now, okay. So he's coming up and he's hitting on his third step. How tight he comes on that path yeah. too. Yeah, he's just you, you know what you do when you're the second when you're the when you're the looper, okay. You try to make your pass rush move off the penetrator. 
That's why you're tight. I mean, he's coming right off his butt. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, when you come around, this one time, which one time you keep, you try to keep stay square. Now watch when he comes around. You got to get square. See how square he is right there? Yeah. So your hips, so your hips are pointed up the field. It's very important when you're coming around because you're, you're kind of running sideways, but you got to be square. And then once you come to the moment of truth, now your hips are pointed in the right direction. Too. And again, you might talk about controlling that upper arm. That you Sue gets right underneath that elbow and gets yeah, that upper yeah. arm. Yeah, he does a good job. Hey, I mean, you can see technique. I, I, I love technique. I just it's a, it's a it's a you know it's it's a to me. Uh, you know, I never tried to be a coordinator. I mean, I, I could have done it. I never tried to be a head coach. I could have done it. But I like my little SEAL team. You know what I mean? I like the sure. little Marine Corps recon group. Here, and that's what I had. And I like the combativeness of the defensive line. You know, in my opinion, they are the most physical, nastiest human beings of all sports. I've put any of my guys up against MMA guys. I think we go down there and use them <laughs> as toothpicks. You know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I love the MMA and all that, but. Come on, man! <laughs> really, you know, and, and uh, it's 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 a it's thing of beauty watching these guys. I love technique watching them. Right, well, go Aaron's ahead. going for the sack record here against Arizona alone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Inside move. I mean, he he's watch his track. See what he does. He's selling a speed track right here, and he hits it on his second step because he's got his inside hand down. He knows he's going to hit it on his second step. See it? Yeah. yeah. So your inside hand, it's even numbers, okay, two and four, okay. If you have the outside hand down, it's odd numbers, one, three, and five. This is, uh, again, for everybody, we're talking about taking this vertical track here before he breaks inside. Yeah. See, oh. where, his, see where his eyes are? His eyes are, the, his eyes are everything. His eyes are selling up the field. His, his eyes and his, everything makes it look like it's a uh, – a speed rush. Yeah. Unreal. I mean, he, he's just a martial arts guy. That's all he is. I mean, look at him right here. See, this is what I talk about with get off and stuff. I see. You, you get off. You want to get in the get Where's the ball? Close the distance between you and the ball. Deacon Jones said, close the distance between you and the ball as fast as you possibly can. Why would they the fearsome force them? Merlin Olson was the most brilliant Utah State grad, okay? But most brilliant, okay? <laughs> Shameless ball, plug. The defensive lineman in the history of the NFL. When I talked to Jack Youngblood, you know, Jack was like my assistant coach at, at, when we were in St. Louis, you know, and, and he came for a week and we had a blast. But, I mean, he he he, he said Merlin. Merlin was the guy. And, and, and Deacon was, was, was had the speed. But Merlin was the one that taught everybody everything. And it's just close the distance between you and the and the and the quarterback as quickly as you can. Like you and the ball carrier. I mean, you can't sit and read. I don't read books, man. Play football, okay? Read some books, all right? You gotta sit there and read. What are you gonna read? Tell me what you're gonna read. Freaking go get your hands on a blocker, get beyond the blocker, and make a play. I get so sick and tired of this reading stuff and two gap and the yuck, yuck. <laughs> I'm retired now. I can stay. I was going to say, you can get after it now. I like this off. <laughs> All right, so let's bump it forward a year. We moved to 2019 early season here. Right three technique. All right, so he comes back. He, he, went, to, he went to go to the inside, okay? He lifts some, but you can see he comes back with that right arm. He comes back with a lift with the right arm, right there. See it? Oh. See, see, because you, I don't look at Aaron. I look at the blocker, so you can see. Well, Jesus, the blocker looks like a drunk. All right. Well, he, he makes him look bad because he takes that arm, that one arm right there. See, what he, he can see it. It's kind of once once you got all the once you know the answers, and you watch film, it's too easy. Yeah, that's unfair. That's unfair. Just, to come back I, on no, that. I'm just saying it's too easy. You can identify it. You can see it. OK, because, I mean, you know, either you're doing something or you're not. OK, so you got to do something. So I think here's our, our Fluker matchup. Tried to cut him. They tried to cut him. Yeah, but see, they just tried to cut him. I mean, that's, that's the luck. But but the biggest thing is watch his shoulder turn. See, see, and look at his hips. See, so every great rush has a shoulder turn. All right, let it go. 
Okay, now look, look at the difference over here with Brockers. Now, Brock, or Brockers and I coach Michael and, and drafted Michael, okay? But Michael's so tall, it's too easy. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> like cutting down a redwood, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. Michael Brockers should never get anywhere. No, he should never get out of that eight. Yeah, man, he should be a nose tackle. He's, he's a beautiful, beautiful player at nose tackle. It's just he's a, a waste. He's a player in there. Oh, it's, it's, it's just a waste. It's just a waste of a football player. I, I'm sorry. It's just me. Uh, he was so good. What What's a better combination than Aaron Donald and Michael Brockers in there? The, 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 oh, my gosh. It was like Henry Thomas and, and uh, John Randall. I mean, holy cow. Why you would change that? What, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Okay. All right. So talk to me about the, when we have a C-gap opportunity here. And we're obviously we're watching him mostly rushing in the B gap and taking some A, but talk to me about C gap when you talk with a player like this. Well, if the guy's a fish, okay, I would put Aaron out there. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste my time. Okay, but go ahead. I mean, why put him farther away from the foot? This is a it's okay. It's a blitz. It's fine. It's a blitz. It's a blitz. But look at the chop club. You see it? It's a beautiful thing. Say, he looks like get... Osi. He looks like Osi. Look at but see the look at see how he gets the upper arm? See? Controls the upper arm. See the elbow? See, that's the key. Oh yeah. That's the key. All right. I mean, it that's, helps turn your hip. It helps that turn, help turns your hips too, you know. Yeah. Okay. He's that completely pointed back inside. Because because the harder you club, the more shoulder turn you get, and it helps your hips. Okay. But again, do you see him rip the run here? No. <laughs> He's taking the point of that elbow and just gonna try to break his ribs. He does. That's fascinating. I can't tell. I mean, I'm just counting up the number of times I've been taught to rip and run or listen to rip and run and just watching him stay on this elbow, drive his right elbow in, get his hips all the way pointed down. I mean, well, you know, my wife, my wife asked me and I, and I do a lot of these things. I had a coordinator from Alabama come fly out. You know, David Aranda came out. To, they had to come to my house. I'll teach it to you. You got to come to my house. David Aranda. The LSU coordinator, he came to my house and and I'll teach it to I mean, I teach him, I'll teach my system, I'll teach it to you if you ask. Because um I went to the best my whole life. Okay. And 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 uh, I had a professor, his name was Dale Nelson at Utah State, working on my master's in exercise physiology. Him and Professor uh, Nalder wrote the books uh, and uh and uh exercise physiology. These guys helped me with the body mechanics more than anybody else. You can I got Hey, nothing, this is nothing to do with football. This is the body mechanics. So I took my body mechanics from Dr. Dale Nelson, and 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 I applied all these body mechanics. And these body mechanics came from from my exercise exercise physiology classes that I took when I was a young coach. And uh, so I combined that. But Dr. Nelson taught me something that was just the best thing that helped me more than anything else. He says, Mike, if you want to be the best. You go to the best and find out how they do it. And I did. And nobody ever charged me a dime. I went to the best defensive lineman in the National Football League and sat down with them. I mean, I started with Joe Green and Randy White and Two Tall Jones and all the way to Howie Long. I mean, every great defensive lineman. I went and interviewed them, and I asked them how they played the game. I interviewed them. I asked them how they played the game. And then I went to the best D-line coaches, you know, and it was, you know, Earl Leggett and John Turlink. And, I mean, you know, Rod Marinelli was my coach, okay, John Turlink. Uh, taught Rob Marinelli and I, and Rob Marinelli was my coach, and we used to bounce everything off of each other all the time. And uh, and you know those are the great those are the great names of the great defensive line coaches. And so I said I'm going to give back. I'm going to give back to football because everybody gave it to me. I took the material, I used it, developed a system. I was always frustrated because nobody, nobody could hand me a book. Like my playbook is 25 pages long. And it has everything from protections and all the offenses, 25 pages long, okay? And it has the answer to everything that I'm just giving you right now. And uh, I have I have a number. It's, on, it's, on, it's right here in front of me. Um, it's it's The number is 1837, okay? And I read a lot of Emerson and Thoreau, and uh, Woody Hayes did too. And so I met with Woody Hayes one-on-one -on -one in, in 1984. And I was talking to uh, uh, Coach Hayes, and I said, you know what, 1837, Coach Hayes. Because what's that, Mike? I says, it's very difficult to be simple enough 
to be good. And he loved that. I mean, he, he, he thought that was the greatest thing ever, you know. And that's the problem with some of these genius coaches, okay. Um, uh, yes, you're brilliant, okay. You're brilliant, and I love it. And I work with some brilliant, brilliant coaches. I just love their intelligence. But the thing is, is that simplicity and being able to apply it and so the players can really play the game. And, uh, and, and that is the thing that, that I learned, okay, and, and then from all those great coaches, and, and I'm able to pass on to everybody else. I've been, you know, other NFL coaches get a hold of me in the system. Uh, 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 there's a lot of uh, guys that, like, like I told you, the Canadian Football League, you know, the, the Pac-12. I mean, so I'm, I'm trying to help. I, I just help coaches, but you got to come to my house. You can come to my house. I'll teach it to you. You got to come to my house. <laughs> and guess what? It doesn't last more than two hours. You know, it doesn't. You can learn everything. That's the simplicity of it. It's so simple. Now you can play and you perform. But the key thing is, is that when I had guys working on their own and I'd see them chatting and I go, hey, hey, guys, um, do you got a thousand reps yet? OK, so when you get a thousand reps, OK, then you can talk. But until you get a thousand reps, don't sit there and visit. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my little peel, but I just, hey, I, I, I think I'm everybody real. needs to hear that. And I got a sneaking suspicion on some people that are going to want to book travel to California. Yeah. But I'm just, yeah, I'll lie. I know I get it, but <laughs> you know, I get it. I get it. But it, it'd have to be, but I'm just saying the thing is, is that, that, um, you know, I, I really feel like I, I give back that way. And I, I don't really have, you know, my wife had two strokes. Okay. And I'm throwing this out for all the women out there. Um, I'm not your, uh, you know, I'm not your homemaker, okay, kind of guy, but uh, you know, for the last 18 months, um, you know, that's why that's what I was doing. It. She decided to sleep in this morning, and I'm like getting all nervous because I had to, uh, you know, cook her breakfast, you know, before I before we did this thing. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm I cook, I clean, I vacuum, I dust, uh, do all the laundry. I got to do it all, you know. She's she's still recovering. And, uh, you know, so I, my hat goes off to all the women out there that do it. I couldn't even imagine taking care of kids, too. I mean, holy cow, it just it's a lot. And it's only the two of us. And it's a lot, you know. And I got so much respect for all the housewives in the world. Uh, and so um, that's why I'm coaching anymore right now. So I got to take care of her. Uh, God bless you for doing that. And that, I'll, I'm going to sneak in my shout out to my wife. She's pregnant right now with our fourth while taking care of my three toddlers. So, yeah, well, that's it. That's it's out to her, Dan. Okay. I just, <laughs> no, uh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, let's get back into some Donald here. We got him right. the left three technique. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this is really good. Okay. Because, uh, all right. This is just in and out. Okay. He's, he's, he does a great job. He First of all, he's selling the inside move of alignment, number one. He lined wide, number one. Okay, And then the second thing is he's going in for the inside move. Okay, But now he just comes back. And look at where he's working. He's working. The, see, you can see the blocker. He's working the upper arm. See it? Every time he's attached yeah. to that upper arm. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. He's a technician. Okay, now to run it back. Let's look at the left end. Watch it. Watch his right elbow. Watch his right elbow. Now, just think if he dug it, if he had dug that point right back into that blocker. Yeah. See, he could have turned his hips better. He ran right by him. Waste of time. It's a wasted rush. And you can see it. Let me just bring it back for everybody here. You're going to see him use the, the, the common teach book right here. He drops it for that rip. And he's just reaching for him the whole time. Now look at watch, watch number 90. So Brock knows how to do this stuff too. Okay. All right. But look at Brock right now. See, see what he does with his arm. Now you can't remember Michael's tall, man. He's almost six, six. Okay. Yeah. Look at, look at how he gets the length of that arm. Watch Watch the center's body. Right. Okay. Let it go. Right there. I mean, he had him. He comes back. Now, look what he does. He takes it with the other arm. Comes back. Same technique. Bring it down. Boom. <laughs> Those two in tandem. You were you were blessed there, Coach. That's a heck of a that's combo where, to work with. That's where Michael belongs. I hope the Rams are listening. They, they just signed him. Again. Okay, I hope they put him back in the A-gap. I hope the coordinator's listening. It's a waste of time, man. He's such a good he got player. Well, he's the my opinion. You watch his film back, you know, when I was coaching him, and uh, God, he's one of the best nose tackles in the league. My 
gosh, it, it took a lot of pride in it. Well, watch that. Watch the, watch the right elbow. Okay, now this is the swipe. Both hands outside. See it? It's Bring it back and slow it down. I didn't teach him this move. This is Aaron's move. So when he gets a puncher, he takes both hands outside, okay? And you have to go to a rip move when you do this. It's natural. But he tries to take both hands outside. See? Both hands outside that arm. Watch the rip and see, see it come back. Yeah. Now, Dan, did you watch this tape beforehand? I, no. I, I mean, when I put it together, I saw some of it, but I didn't study it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, you know, you saw some of these, right? Yeah. Okay, now, now you know all, this, all the little intricacies. Of oh, absolutely. Look at the other. You can see it. There it is. I'm, I'm also dying at this set here from 62. Yeah. yeah. Well, the see, immediate Aaron, pivot was, seems like a bold strategy. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron is Aaron is the only player because he lives real close. And we live we lived a mile apart from each other until he got his new contract and he moved to, over to Calabasas big time. But you know, <laughs> so but uh, you know, he, he came out my back out in our backyard, and so all this you know this we just did a lot of this. He's the only guy that I've coached since I've retired. And I, and I, I talked to Michael on the phone too, Brockers. You know, I talked to him on the phone, but. Physically, physically met with, with uh, Aaron and going through this stuff. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. He puts really. it in practice so well. I mean, he again, really the consistency of it. You know? Well, the thing is, is it takes time. I mean, if I if I had another year in Buffalo, and those guys would have been a lot better at it, you know. And it, it, it takes time. It takes time. You can get it, you know. We, I mean, we went to the playoffs that year, and they haven't been in 17 years. So a lot of good things were happening, you know, so – but the ball, I'll tell you what, our secondary, our secondary was outstanding. Leslie Frazier was an outstanding coordinator and, and uh, outstanding head coach was Sean McDermott. And and uh, I'll tell you what, they we, we put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. You know, we were, like, ranked very high in the NFL as far as quarterback hits and pressures. And, uh, you know, we were in the top two or three. And, and um uh, and, but they, were, they weren't the most they, they weren't the most talented guys. They couldn't have started at the Rams. None of those guys. I mean, I love I love uh, you know <clears throat> Kyle Williams, but I mean he, he couldn't beat Aaron out. You know, sure. time. You know, I'm just I love them. But uh, and those guys were a great unit and they played hard and they were a great team together. And but the, you know the technique right now, the technique is just it's it's it takes time. It takes time. You got to work at it all the time. Need a thousand reps. You know. That is just an effort. That's an effort. It's a, it's a, it's a scheme. That's a scheme. Oh me. yeah, well, and it, but I just like the way he sells it. You know, he, he'll commit to the two steps. You know, he yeah. took a tighter track the last go round. Yeah, he's he's good. I just love the way he takes quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, he, I he drive really enjoys it. Because I always wanted him to, you know, go down on the ground and and lay on him and make him feel a little body weight and stuff. You know, he just likes throwing them down. Inside move. That's awesome. Isn't that great? That's great. That's I'm going to slow it down, see if we can get him when he pins this arm. Yeah, but see, yeah, you can see it, but he's working the. Why do you think the blocker's body goes forward? He's yeah. working the upper. That's martial arts, man. You know, the guy that really helped me a lot with the martial arts, he was LAPD Metro, uh, did some SWAT stuff, you know, but he, he's, he's, his name is Steve Ulrich. Okay. And Steve came to the Rams and working. I met him at the Pro Bowl. We were over at the Pro Players, took us over the Pro Bowl. I think when Michael and Osi took us then in 2005, I met him then. And um, and he, I've been working with him. He's the only martial arts guy that made sense. And uh, he's the only one. And, and he's the one that taught me the upper arm thing. Man, I'm, I'm glad he did because I'm enjoying watching it in practice. It's, it's fun to watch. That I mean, you you wanted me to talk pass rush, and and I can only do it with Aaron because he's the only one that can do it that does it all. He's got the, he's you know he's he's a he is a tenth degree black belt. Okay, you know there's no, if tenth degree is the highest. You know. Well, the number of times I have to slow it down frame by frame to even attempt to show off his hands, yeah, they're pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. He's, but yeah, but you can see. I mean, how does he go outside right here and all of a sudden his hips turn right back into the blocker? Crazy. Now look at Fowler. Fowler was Fowler was ripping to run. Look at him. Watch 56 go inside. Yeah, he tries to rip real high. He rips real high. Look what happens. The offensive lineman pulled him right down. Did nothing. Let me let me right back. Right back. I want to see something. Gotcha. I want to see something. I want to see something. I got a lot of respect for Clay Matthews. I love him, man. He's a great rusher. See, see, he's he does right there. Look what he does with his hands. See, he's, he does good. He knocks the hands down. He's there. 
he had a great teacher in Kevin Green, you know, great teacher. He had some years in Green Bay now. What's that? He had some great years in Green Bay. Oh, he had some great years. Oh, man, great years. I mean, I, I think another person that's just got a really good feel for all this stuff is Kevin Green. Now, did he get uh, – he always with the Jets. That was under Todd's staff, right? He's not, he's not still yeah. there, is he? He's not coaching right now. Okay. Shame. There's so many guys coaching right now that don't know what the heck they're doing. It just drives me nuts watching them. It's awful. That's just me. <laughs> it's, it's awful. Well, uh, Aaron's going to abuse again the inside move here. Yep. See how, but when he does it, see you see where his target is. The tricep. You see it. Yep. Every time he's hitting the back of the tricep and the control of the shoulder. Now he just doesn't assume that he's going to get through there. Okay, a lot of guys do, and they just get knocked. He's using his inside arm, okay, to push off the – he's getting to the back of the second guy. If you're to the back, you're free. Look at that. So that's Every time. Happened. But how does his hips turn back to the quarterback? Yeah. You see it? It's the body mechanics of that left elbow. That's something else. Yeah. I say a lot of this stuff, man. A lot of it really came from, you know, I, I, I tell Dr. Dale Nelson, he's passed away now, but – Man, a lot of the, it's just the body mechanics of how this controls that and that controls this. And, you know, it's cool stuff. Well, Coach, we got a chance to hear a bit about your backstory as we went through uh, through those pieces. Um, and again, some of the people that have taught you along the way. But you mentioned that Aaron's, you know, the only guy that kind of puts it all together. Um, I, I don't have words. It's it's too much fun to watch him do that. It's, it's damn near unfair. But what are your kind of final thoughts after going through that? Well, I I, I, I love him. He's like a son to me. Okay, and uh, we still communicate quite a bit. And uh, I just I, it's so fun uh, that at the end of the at the end of my career uh, to know that that all of this came together. No, it doesn't happen. And there is a, a frustrated coach, young coach, that wanted to develop a system that worked, that was unstoppable. And uh, and it works for everyone. I mean, I see some, you know, I've seen a lot of players. I mean, the list uh, made a lot of, I, I, I say it this way, and, and, and I say this not, boist, not boasting, okay, but it's the truth. I made a lot of backup players a lot of money, be, okay, and, and because – of this system and uh and and i trusted everybody if you ever watched i mean i rotated so many guys michael strahan says i'm not coming off the field yes you are yes you are because you're going to play hard michael I, we need you in the two minute at the end of the half and we need you in the two minute at the end of the game yes you are michael you're going to play hard all the time i i cut up all his tapes when i got to the new york giants i cut up everything and we first met and we met for two hours in my office and we watched all the cut up and he loved it. He nobody had ever done that for him before. And I, I cut up all this run stuff and, and everything. And we went through every segment and how I was gonna teach a lot of things. And then I, I showed him a cut up of my my uh, Raider stuff with the chop club and all the stuff with the Raiders. And I said, I'm gonna teach you this, you know. And we got to the door when my office he's walking out in Giant Stadium and I go, Hey, come here. I want you to look at these eight plays. There are eight loafs. The worst loafs, he wouldn't even finish in the play. I said, you will never do that, ever, ever, playing for me, ever, okay? And if you ever watched him practice, okay, he we, he, we called it STB, sprint to the ball, STB. <laughs> and we used to, I used to give him STBs in practice. And who led, who led every practice? Michael did, sprinting to the ball. Now, Tuck used to say, well, Waff, he only, he only practices, you know, not as many plays as we do. I said, he's, he's older. I'm taking care of him. But when he does practice, he runs to the ball, and, and he ran to the ball on Sundays. And they all did. And we love that unit, and we won a world championship. I was uh, I was privileged to see it up close, and it was, uh, it was a hell of an experience, young in my career, to be there and see that. So, um, but again, I, I appreciate all your, your mentorship and support over the years. It's been great learning from you. We've learned more today. Uh, I know everybody has. So I'm excited to see what, uh, what the feedback is from people on this one. Um, and, and just thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to have you back at some point. Well, uh, you know, thank you, Dan. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back. I have some really good philosophies on the run game. You know, it's, it's uh, very simple. Okay. And it works. 
uh, Greg Williams uh, was just, he's brilliant, brilliant coordinator, and, and uh, he really taught me a lot of neat things that, that, that are really some good stuff that, that are good principles that you can apply at any level. And so I'd like to do that. But I want to shout out today. I want to shout out to all the families who lost a loved one over the years. Okay, today's Memorial Day. Uh, I'm a big, big, full-blooded Marine, man. I mean, it's, you know, that, that's why I don't mind cleaning the house, okay, because you got to do, man's got to do what a man's got to do, but but I, I, all the all the veterans out there and all all you wives that your, your husbands are overseas and stuff, and I just want to thank everybody, thank everybody on Memorial Day, and and uh, I hope that uh, God's close to your heart, okay, you know, as far as if you if you lost a loved one recently, and, and hopefully uh, he'll, he'll comfort you. No, I echo those words. And, and again, thank you so much to everybody uh, for joining us. And we'll, we'll see you again here next time. Thanks, guys.